I'm like barely breathing because this is a probably only opportunity to take some pictures of her that I have until the next rehouse, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more. All right, can you please keep your eye on her? Okay, we'll see if we can... Well, how are we gonna do it? Because you will probably try to climb up. So what now? What we... Ay! Okay. Hey what's up guys, welcome to Spider Cafe, my name is Miro and today we're gonna be rehousing a couple of beautiful arboreal tarantulas Ibirapora soretama and Iridopelma hirsutum They both bolted on me Actually one rehouse was kind of my fault because my dilemma is always am I gonna get good pictures or am I gonna do proper rehouse The first time I tried to go for pictures and the Ibirapora soretama was really mellow so I put her on a cork bar but you guys already saw in a preview what happened Let's watch that rehouse right now but don't forget to watch till the end because we're gonna show you another rehouse in the end and Yeah, you don't have your webbing on this. You probably don't wanna go, huh? I know, you don't feel safe. But look, you got one paw in there. Seven more to go. Hmm? Come on, girly. Come on, girly. That's one little stubborn baby, huh? But look how leggy she is already, you know, I think it's a good time to rehouse her, even though it's a little big for her right now, but there's so many hiding places. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Almost there. right now so I'm like barely breathing because this is a probably only opportunity to take some pictures of her that I have until the next rehouse you know We'll see if we can... Well, how are we gonna do it? Because you will probably try to climb up. So what now? What are we... Ay! Okay. Okay, I have her cup. Cool. Yeah, I was pushing my luck a little bit, but that's okay. She's already been here. There we go. This is... Oh, uh, no. Another full turn? No? No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're at home. Hmm? Welcome home. That went relatively well, right? A little 
you know, a little around about what can you do, you know? Well, let me make a quick announcement. We are doing free shipping on any of our t-shirts and these are bugs in famous movies. And here you can see a Resus spider as Brad Pitt, uh, Heteropoda David Bowie as Ed Norton and obviously it's a fight club. Uh, you can get any of our designs at spidercafe.shop. This video is gonna be divided into three different categories. One's gonna be enclosures habitat, second's gonna be uh, food and water requirements, and the third one's gonna be biology and behavior. So obviously these spiders are arboreal spiders, so they need enclosures to be taller uh, than wider and they usually web up the top. What I like to do, I like to use these enclosures where you can actually take the whole top off uh, as opposed to enclosures where you slide the lid off. And that's basically because if you slide the lid off, you're gonna be web messing up with their webbing. So like this, you can always open it up without messing up their webbing. And sometimes they web it up so conveniently that I can actually take the whole lid off. And we did a bunch of times with our Caribbean Aversi color and it's kind of fun because you get to feed them in it and it's pretty awesome. So for the slings, I was using something like this and ventilation is the key for them too. So I actually combined two enclosures with two vents. You don't actually have to buy expensive enclosures you can basically buy some display boxes at place like pioneer plastics and you can buy for price of one of these enclosures like four maybe even six to eight boxes like that and just drill holes through them and you're gonna have basically the exact same thing as a substrate currently i'm using repti soil but you can use any top soil and just make sure that it doesn't have any chemicals in it and there is a little conversation about it some people keep them completely dry with good ventilation and a water dish but for for the slings I was always keeping the substrate a little damp. I had a tiny little water dish there, I don't know if you guys can see it right here, and basically kept the substrate damp. And since these are arboreal tarantulas I also like to glue, I just take a hot glue gun and glue a few cork barks to the lid as well because these, those serve as anchor points for the tarantulas uh, for her to anchor her webbings so that you know that way she can create these beautiful tunnels up there and as a sling sometimes they create these tunnels at the bottom too for the larger ones as you saw in a video uh, for the juveniles i use something like this this is a big fat fit it's actually a jumping spider enclosure but again you can use any box that is taller uh, then wider and basically similar setup. For these I use hollow cork barks. I also have a, a water dish that I glue a little bit closer to the top so it's easier for her to access it. These tarantulas are not adults yet but we will eventually put them in something like this. Basically just scaling up the size as you can see here is our Avicularia purpurea. Beautiful little female. When you get an enclosure of this size, you can set it up bioactive because, as I said, these spiders are from a rainforest, so you can actually have some live plants. And I also have a live moss in there, which keeps the humidity high. For food, as you guys maybe notice, I feed most of my arboreal spiders flying insects. I have a small colony of banana roaches that I'm trying to grow a little bigger, so those are gonna be substituting some of the flies uh, in the future because those cockroaches can fly and they're also beautiful, so it's gonna make for some cool pictures. I get house flies for the smaller slings or blue bile flies for the larger slings, but sometimes I also get crickets. Basically, you don't want uh, prey that is bigger than, than their abdomen and around the molting time, which usually well, the tarantulas get a little lethargic, I wouldn't feed them anything like crickets because the crickets can, they can fight back and they can bite your tarantula. As far as water requirements go, I miss them two to three times a week, their enclosures, and sometimes I miss it even more often because as I said I have a live moss in there so I'm trying to keep it alive. And they also all have water dishes that I like to glue to the top of the enclosure. Sometimes when they are pre mold they webbed up and they don't have access to the water, so what I recommend is spray a little bit of the webbing. Alright, and before we dive in, into their behavior and biology let's watch the second promise tree house she webbed it up nicely when she was a younger sling she didn't web up at all she would only web up before her molt but uh, right now she's webbing up all the time come on messy show us those beautiful colors that you have yeah there she is come on yeah there she is she's like who is this who's bothering me But 
Okay, this may not be a perfect picture opportunity. Visual thinking here, hoping that she's gonna go down instead of up, which, you know, is their normal behavior. When they bold guys, gotta stay cool. Stay cool, Brad. Stay cool. Stay cool, Brad. But both of these little tarantula rehouses that we have, we had a little bolting in there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These spiders are closely related. Both of these girls are closer. Clo both of these girls are closely related. They come from Amazon and you guys can correct me on this. I believe it's on the east coast of Brazil where they reside uh, in the nature and they grow four to five inches. I read somewhere, I believe it was Firna tarantulas, that their slings are kind of defensive, but mine, as you can see, weren't defensive. They were a little flighty, but not defensive. So, you know, the spiders, they have different personalities. I want to say that our Eridopelma hirsutum didn't web up at first. When she was a tiny sling, she would only web up when she was ready to molt, and then she would take her webbing down. But they changed once she became like this small, tiny juvenile. She's still kind of technically a sling slash juvenile. So once she got a little bigger, now she actually webs up nicely. And let me show you. Here you can see how they web up and how they connected the hollow cork bark to their webbing. So they have like a bunch of escape tunnels. Pretty cool. I want to say the growth rate is medium, medium fast. And as you guys saw, our rehouse was really mellow. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the notifications button, subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends if there is anybody who has these spiders. They are a little bit more on the rare side, uh, but basically the care is very similar to if you would get any avicularia. So if you're getting a pink toe, the care is going to be basically very similar. And also, don't forget free shipping on any of our t-shirts. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. We have a bunch of cool stuff coming up, so see you soon.